All right, so today we're going to learn how to make jellyfish in Nomad Sculpt. Uh, so here we have a recent jelly that I created. Uh, just to kind of show you uh, what it looks like, we're going to create one completely from scratch, but I wanted to start here. Um, so here we go. I've saved this as a new file, and I'm going to go up ahead and delete each of these so I can start over. Okay, so now I have a blank canvas. And in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little square which you can drag around. I like to start from the front. And we're, if we tap in the upper right-hand corner, we're going to go to the lathe tool. And the lathe tool might be somewhere else, so you can click and drag these around to reorder them. Um, but cool, let's go with the lathe tool. And we're going to select symmetry, select a curve. There we go. Might, able, might be able to just select a curve. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to draw the jellyfish head. And with symmetry selected, we can go ahead and start up here. And let's make a fairly typical jellyfish shape. And we're going to close this shape like this. And up to this line. There we go. So now we've gone ahead and created like the bell shape for the jelly. And we can click and drag these around to kind of adjust the shape. Uh, maybe we want to reduce points here, so we can drag these into each other. And I'll reduce the points. So if you want to drag this a little further down, maybe not make it quite as pronounced. And we can drag around anywhere in the, the dark or open space. Um, cool, I'm going to kind of round this out a little bit more. It kind of looks like a top hat jelly. Let's make a top hat jelly. I think that could be fun. <laughs> okay, so now we have essentially the, the top hat, the, the main bell shape or head of the jelly, and we're going to click validate. So it looks a little bit pixelated right now, and what we need to do is tap up here uh, in, within the topology and under multi-resolution, we'll click subdivide, and this will, you'll see it starts smoothing out a bit, and we're going to tap in the bottom left-hand corner on one of these colors. And right now we'll see, let's go ahead and select maybe this paint right here and force paint. So now we can really see the pixelation around. So if we go in and add a little more or a few more subdivides, we'll see that kind of smooth out the paint. And this image is coming from, let's see, from the environment. So well, let me go ahead and turn off notifications real quick. Okay, there we go. And so, we can update this environment photo however we'd like to. There are several that are stock. Uh, what I like to do is create something in Procreate and then add that within here. Uh, so if you change it, it completely changes the, the look of <laughs> the jelly. Um, we can make, maybe like, oh, I think a sparkly effect top hat jelly could be fun. Um, let's see what happens. Cool. So, Let's go ahead and make this top hat jelly. What color should we make it? I don't, green top hats aren't very common, but they could be fun. Maybe we can make a pink one. We don't have that many green jellies though. So let's go ahead and force paint. And each of the jellies that I've made are transparent, uh, or translucent, I guess you'd say. So the vast majority of jellyfish are super translucent. And to get that effect, we're going to go into the material and we have our lathe layer selected if we rename this i think it should pop up here um, but i like to go either with an additive or a blending mode and we can kind of adjust this down this glow effect is called bloom and that's available within the camera settings uh, or, or no within the post process <laughs> settings cool so here there's a bloom option, so if I select this, or deselect and select, we'll see how it comes up. And let's also, I'd like to rename this jelly really quick. So rename it to Top Hat Jelly. And let's save it. And when you save, you'll see a little preview in this box here. Cool, so now let's make some uh, jelly legs. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
And for this, we're going to use the tube tool. And if you tap in the upper right here, you'll see that it changes to a scrollable uh, or to this little menu here. So with tube selected, we can go to curve. And I don't see the uh, symmetry right now. So I'm gonna go into the symmetry settings and it should be on the X axis. And I wanna show the line and maybe even show the plane. And now it should pop up. So the, the line, oops, <laughs> the line is right here. And for some reason our jelly isn't fully centered. So I'm gonna center the jelly a little bit with the gizmo, bring it over. Cool, there it's nice and centered. And yeah, there we go. Pretty, pretty close. Oh yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go back to tube and let's draw some curves. So when we have symmetry turned on, uh, when I draw over here, we need a little more room here. Uh, it might actually have to turn on mirror mode. There we go. And we'll see how that will automatically create a nice mirror effect. Let's extend these. And don't worry, we're going to adjust them a bit. If you drag them into each other, uh, you reduce the points. And if you tap somewhere, you can create new points. Here. And also, if you do a sharp tap, you'll get kind of like a sharp turn. So if you tap again, it'll smooth it out. Oop. That's kind of a interesting, interesting looking jelly. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm pinching on the screen to do that. So let's add a little more softness to this curve. Because that's, oops, it's really abrupt. It's okay to make mistakes as we're going through. We're having fun. And when you're working with the tube, we can adjust it by clicking and dragging on this yellow to reduce the thickness. And also within the settings in topology, we can scroll down and adjust the density or the radius start changes. Or if you want to add a hold to the tube, we can do that here too. So Let's see if I uncheck that box. I believe at this point, sometimes we can tap. I don't remember how it brings it in. Anyways, uh, that looks like a pretty good shape for now. So what I'm gonna do is validate this. And once it's validated, I like to go in and smooth uh, the bottom point here. So I've selected the smooth tool. I'm gonna turn off the paint option is I don't want to paint it just yet. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to smooth the ends here. So you can see they're becoming a bit more sharp. Uh, you can always zoom in and look at them. It kind of looks like it has legs right now. And as I rotate, I saw that it looks like it's up front here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the gizmo. And we're gonna move it along uh, let's see, Z axis, yeah. So we're in the blue. Cool. And we're doing that by selecting or clicking and dragging on the arrow. And you can do that for any direction. So I kind of like to get it nice and centered when I look at it from the top just to see. There's the top. Let's kind of rotate around. There's the back. and let's go to the top. Cool, I like to make sure it's nice and centered. So from here what we can do is we can either start like elongating the, the legs by clicking on this axis here. So if you click on this ball, you can start changing the, the length. Uh, the undo and history within here is wonderful. It makes it so easy to use. Uh, but what I want to do is duplicate these legs a few times. So what we're going to do is select. Let's make sure we have, yep, we have a mesh selected. And we're going to clone. Uh, so with clone selected, I'm going to rotate along this axis. There we go. And then I'm going to select both of these and clone again. And on this axis again. There we go. 
And now I'm going to select all four of them and clone one more time. So I can do this as many times as you want to. And that's something I like to do at this point usually is I'll go ahead and maybe merge a few of these. So I'll do a simple merge. And then I'm going to duplicate this set. And I'm going to bring it in a bit. Oops. If we click and drag in the orange here, we can bring it in a bit. Cool. And I'm also going to elongate these. There we go. And bring it back to front. Make sure that it's at a nice spot there. I might make these ones a bit longer. Bring it down. It's very distinguished. And I might, let's see, if I want to bring in a bit here. Here. Cool, so now they're a bit longer in front. And I'm gonna bring it up right about there. And at this point I'll duplicate this one more time and I'm gonna make this one quite a bit smaller. And bring it up in here just to kind of give it a little more body. Cool. And at this point we can select all of the mesh. And let's give it some color. So if we want to give it all that green color, we can. Um, what I like to do is vary the color a little bit throughout. So let's select this one, this one. Those are the two internal ones. Now jellyfish have stingers, so uh, we can have some fun here. So let's make sure that we have this paint color saved. There we go. And let's see. I like to slide along here and keep helps to find the, the right pink colors. Could do pink, could do a blue, could do a yellow or an orange or a red. Feels like a blue could be kind of fun. Let's try and blue and I'll force paint those. And then these are both blue so I'm gonna merge them. So I'm gonna name them blue legs. I don't always name my layers, but sometimes I do, and sometimes it makes sense. <laughs> cool, let's select each of these, and I'm going to just double check real quick. So we got the internal layer. So I think that we made three layers or two. Looks like we have this layer and then a more internal one. So let's select this one, bring it closer to like the green, and oh wait, now I'm just having fun. <laughs> cool, so we have these blue legs, and let's make them translucent. So I only have this set selected. And I'm going to go to Material and go with Additive. It's a nice little effect. And we do that with each of these. Additive. And we can decrease the opacity if we want to. Do the same here. And just about done. Okay, Additive Image. And you'll see it might bring out different colors and schemes. I keep clicking on the wrong thing there. Let's go with additive. Let's reduce the opacity for this outer one. And then once we select them all, we see then that we have a jelly. So a top hat jelly, I'd expect to have kind of like a band at the top. I might change these a little bit um, to make them smaller. And I want to make it a little more dense. I'm just going to duplicate these a few times. Clone them. Cool. These outer legs look quite intense. I think I'm going to make them a little bit longer. And bring it down. Let's go to the front. Cool. OK. 
Okay, and then let's add like a band to this top hat. I think that would be fun. Cool. So what we're gonna do is add a shape. I'm gonna go with a torus. And we're gonna draw the torus a bit more. There we go. And I think we can use this, oh no, we wanna use the pink one. Oh no, keep the pink one for. <laughs> I usually do all the topology in here. So I think it's the outer radius to make it bigger. And then inner radius is what we're gonna make a little smaller here. And we're gonna bring in the size a bit. Oops, reselect that. I'm just tapping with my pencil when I reselect. Okay, there we go. And let's bring this down to about here. And I'm curious, what does this, oops, what does the green shirt do? Okay, that's fun. So let's see, is this inside of the bell? I kind of want to bring it up taller. And it will need to have some contrast to it. It's blue or like purple. Let's go with purple. Set it there and let's kind of drag it up this way, make it taller. Maybe put it up here. Ooh, wouldn't it be fun to make a few of these? So I'm going to clone it and drag up. And I'm going to make this one narrower. I think that could be fun. Let me bring it in a little bit. And let's duplicate that one one more time. This one will be a little bit bigger. Duplicate it one more time. There we go. It's a funky looking top hat. And make sure it's actually touching. I think it's right around there. Cool. And I'm going to go ahead and validate this. And I'm going to go to material. Let's so divide this a bit to make it smoother and set it to additive and do the same for each of these. We don't have to validate it yet unless we want to increase the mesh properties. So I'm going to validate them each time. And so I accept additive, set this one, validate, subdivide, and additive, do the same here, validate, subdivide, and additive. Whoa, okay. I might have some fun at the bottom one. We can set it to attractive, blending, a dither, and reduce the opacity. And let's just select these and take a look at what's happening with our jelly now. It is quite something. So I want to make the blue match the purple and I also kind of want to make them look more like bands but I haven't decided yet. That will be a fun decision. Hmm. I'm looking at the front. I kind of want to reduce the bloom a little bit. It's a little less intense. There we go. And these green legs look kind of robotic. So what I like to do is select the move tool and we can do it with symmetry on at first, uh, but I find I end up adjusting it later on. Uh, we'll go to the front view and with the move tool selected, symmetry's on. If I start moving around here, then we kind of get more of like a free form jelly leg experience. <laughs> okay. Cool, I'm gonna turn off symmetry now. And this way these don't look exactly the same. Because they're usually a bit different. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of that on the blue here as well. And I'll keep the symmetry on for now. And I might actually go to drag, because drag will grab multiple elements and turn off symmetry here. But with that we can, let's see, 
and drag multiple pieces at the same time. And I'm just selecting where the little red point is. And this gives it like a nice flowy effect. And I just saw that we not paint this right here. It looks like we didn't. Let's force paint that. And I also want to select any of the blue blends. Let's make them purple. Okay, there we go. Interesting. And then there's still, okay, there's blue. Let's make this purple. Or what we could do is make that green because then it kind of stands out. Cool, there we go. Let's select it all and let's check out our jelly. So there's Top Hat Jelly. If we go, so we can do any side. And I like to pose them. So I'll select the gizmo. I rotated. Uh, I think I picked everything. Yeah. Let me double check. Yep, I have all layers selected. Cool, and now we have top hat jelly. And we can save it out. Let's go ahead and save that. So I like to export it with custom size. There we go. Usually, I save it 4,000 by 4,000. It's pretty large, so you always have to save your jelly before any artwork in here, um, or else it might crash when you're exporting uh, larger files. So let's see how we do here. Let's tap on export, look at this little notice, and let's tap OK, and let's wait. There we go, and now we can save that. Cool. And it looked kind of sharp, so I'm going to adjust the sizing a little bit here. It looks like there's something that's like white in the middle there. It's one of these meshes. I have made a mesh. Okay. I don't know which one it is. Is it this one? No. Just going through and selecting. Jellies get pretty intense pretty quickly. Oh, I just realized something. I want to drag these around a little bit. So let's go to drag. There we go. Just so it's not quite as robotic looking. And something fun now, since we have our jelly created, we can go ahead and look and see what it's gonna look like if we were to change the, the paint color. I'm also gonna hide this plane right now. There we go. So let's see if we were to change the image that it's pulling from. Whoa, it gets super bright with that. That one's always fun to play with. That's actually a screenshot from I think Robin Hood at some point. See kind of the blue. I've made quite a few with this color and uh, that's actually kind of a fun effect. So if we reduce the bloom or increase the threshold for blooming. Whoa. Quite a few different colors then. And a very bright white from the center. Something we could do is, let's see, select this mesh, or actually select the top hat and then each of the toruses. And let's see if it'll, no, let me size. Hmm. So I'm going to save this as a new one. Let's see. Save as Top Hat Jelly 2. Cool. And I did that because I want to merge the hat with each of the rings. Do a simple merge. 
And when you do that, it removes the material setting. So if you just set it back to additive and kind of break down, it should be fine. Um, but I'm thinking we can bring these down a little bit or bring the top hat down in size. And let's line up the jelly legs a little bit better. There we go. That way it doesn't look like they're just hanging, free floating in space as much. Um, there we go. And now we've got top hat jelly. And I kind of like the other image better. Hmm. We'll need to adjust blue a little. Decisions, decisions. You'll notice how much it changes as you go through. All different kinds of looks. Just have fun creating. I think I'm leaning towards this one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust the bloom a little again. Let's increase it a bit. Gives the, the nice glow effect. See if we want to add anything else. Let's add some ambient occlusion. Uh, it's not going to do much here. I'm debating if I want to try and flatten the rings, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. So it also kind of looks like the rings are off now. I'm not resizing, but it's it's okay. I'll, I'll fix them a little bit. But just wanted to create top hat jelly. So yeah, hope that y'all enjoyed that, and have fun making jellies, or whatever else you want to create. I can't wait to see what you make.